Welcome to Canada's podcast. Hello, I'm Mario Tonaguzzi, Managing Editor of Canada's Podcast. Joining me today on Calgary's podcast is Holly Singer, who is founder of the Milk Jar Candle Company. Thanks for joining us today, Holly. Thanks so much for having me today. I'm excited to be able to talk to you. All right, super. Let's uh, talk first a little bit about the company. Um, tell me what uh, Milk Jar uh, Candle Company is and what you do. Yeah, so Milk Jar is a candle company that I started in my home kitchen about almost eight years ago now. So we'll be eight actually next week. Next week's our birthday. And it really was a company that I really wanted to use as a vehicle for a greater purpose. Um, I do love making candles and I do think we make a pretty darn good candle. <laughs> um, but really the whole reason behind why I started it was to use it as a vehicle to give back to a community that I really cared about, that I thought I was going to be working in in my career. Um, and that's working with people with disabilities. So in my undergraduate degree at the University of Calgary, I uh, took a kines degree and I had a class in uh, that program called Adapted Physical Activity. And that really was the first spark of my desire and interest to uh, work with this community and, you know, be a support and create these opportunities because um, not everyone in this world has the same access and opportunities as everyone else does. Yeah. So I conducted pool therapy and the practicum was only supposed to go four months. I ended up swimming with that boy and his mom for seven years. Uh, and it was it was definitely one of those sparks, I call them, those moments in your life where you're, it, I think the universe or something's trying to tell you like, hey, this is your purpose or this is an interest of yours, kind of go down this path. Um, I thought I was going to be an occupational therapist, but I applied for a master's after my undergrad. And I say I partied too much <laughs> when I was younger, so I uh, didn't have straight A's, so I unfortunately didn't get in. <laughs> um, but I really didn't let that deter me from, you know, uh, seeing what I could do uh, do to make a difference. And a number of years after that, I was making candles. I thought I could start a business and I would donate a dollar from the sale of each candle to give back to organizations that support children with disabilities um, in Calgary. And it kind of took off. Um, I was actually in my second degree for nursing at the time, and I decided to drop out and pursue entrepreneurship. And here we are now. Milk Jar is now eight years old. Uh, it's not made in my kitchen anymore. <laughs> we have a, a warehouse where we uh, make all the product. We're a team right now of 24 staff members. Oh. We teach candle making classes. We sell internationally now. And we're also an inclusive employer. So a third of our staff at Milk Jar have a disability that help make the product that you get to take home and enjoy. Wow. Um, to backtrack for a second, uh, why candles? Uh, you know, you could have uh, done a lot of different things, I guess, right? Uh, but uh, why did you choose candles to embark on? I I made candles for maybe a year before starting the business. Um, and why I really got interested in them was I learned about uh, that burning paraffin wax candles, which was the most common candle on the market, uh, was harmful to your health. Bre breathing it in can cause some respiratory issues and headaches. And that was the candle I was more accustomed to. Um, and then, so I decided I wanted something cleaner, soy candles. I also learned about wood wicks. They were kind of new at the time and not many candle companies were doing that. And it was kind of hard to find soy candles and wood wicks. So I decided to buy the materials and start making them. And I have so much fun blending scents together. Um, I think I have a little bit of a knack for it. So, and then I would give them to friends and they liked them. So yeah, it kind of just snowballed from there. And yeah. I do think it's kind of that, it, it's a really peaceful thing to have a candle burning. Um, it's like a little mini campfire in your home, especially when it's a crackling wood wick. And yeah, it's just, it's just that kind of nice ambiance. So that's how I kind of got started with candles. Oh, cool. So um, today, um, where can people find the candles? So we're, if you're in Calgary, we do have our own warehouse where you can uh, come and purchase candles. We have a tiny little retail area, um, but we're also online and we wholesale to actually quite a lot of different stores. So there is a map on our website at milkjar.ca 
And you can find all the shops we're in. We're in locally Blush Lane. Um, we're in Field Study. We're in 27 Boutique, a lot of really cool stores that are around. And then we also are in a ton of stores across Canada in the States. And even now, internationally, we recently, just this last year, kind of broke into the UK, Belgium, Germany, Switzerland, Australia even, I think has a, there's a couple shops with our candles in it now. So how many different? Uh, Sorry, how many different candles do you make? We, I guess like at any given time, we do have some seasonals that come in and out. Like we do have some holiday candles right yeah, now. Yeah. Typically, I think it's around like 18. We have a line and oh. some are made with fragrance oils. We have, which is a synthetic oil. Um, all our fragrances are phthalate free. And we do have a line of essential oils, which is completely natural and plant-based oils and then we have another line that's a mix of fragrance and essential oils mm. um you know I, I just going back to uh, to your purpose here uh you know when you look around at the at the business world out there uh not too many people are are doing what you're doing right and uh uh why do you think you know first of all what what are the obstacles and and why are the, what's the roadblocks that for for companies not doing what you're doing? Yeah, the the I think probably you're referring to the inclusive um, yeah. employment piece. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a quite interesting. Um, it feels like we're kind of breaking a mold a little bit, especially being a small business doing this because we've been an inclusive company now for four years. Um, I would say one of the biggest barriers that I've seen and when I've chatted with other business owners is just this fear of the unknown. Mm. And I would probably say um, I may have had that too if I didn't have that experience in my undergrad degree of spending some good quality time with someone with a different profile than me. Um, I might have thought the same because, you know, this world has been quite exclusive. Um, yeah. And, you know, we've we've done a lot of this othering, even as I've grown up, I never spent a lengthy amount of time with someone with a disability, never in mm. any of my classes in school, never a sports team or never a job. So this, this othering that's happened in society, this exclusion creates this unconscious bias that we're not supposed to be together or we can't do the same things. And I really want to show people that that's just not true. Um, we are all people at the end of the day. And um, I think... Business owners asking themselves just that question as to why, um, and then them kind of really reflecting on that. You see how kind of how, how silly it is sometimes, and you know it's it's just the biggest barrier is a business owner's decision to just do it. Um, it's that simple and that easy. And there are a lot of service agencies out there in every province. I know. Um, I know of Inclusion Alberta Gateway Association. Um, Vekova, Goodwill, all in Alberta, there's service agencies that support um, people with disabilities looking for employment and connecting them to employers looking to hire. And they support the interview process, the onboarding, the hiring, it all. And they're there, like any step of the way, you have a question of bringing in um, inclusive practices in your company. They're there to support you. And I don't think there's a lot of companies that know that that exists. Mm. What would be your um, "quote unquote" sales pitch, I guess, to companies uh, to do this uh, and to be more inclusive? Uh, I would tell them. I would tell them you get to do this. This isn't a I have to do this. It's a you get to do this truly, because at Milkshare, what I've seen in four years of how much our company has become better. And I didn't always maybe think this at the beginning too. I will be honest that I maybe thought that we were do we were giving more than we were going to receive. And I would say we have received 10 times more than what I think I have given to my staff. Mm. Um, and that is in like our employee retention has increased substantially, not just amongst our employees with disabilities, but amongst all our employees, because we we hire people now that know about our company and they want to work for a company that cares also just as much about people as they do about sales and profits. Mm. Um, workplace culture has improved. It's a lot more positive. Uh, there's a lot more connection amongst the different teams now too, with our marketing and 
our um, shipping team, our production team, our management team, just because we're connecting a lot more. Because when you do have these um, kind of more inclusive practices, you you communicate more, you check in more, you make sure every because everyone has a different way of learning and operating. We want to make sure we're um, supporting each individual with how best they can know what uh, is is being asked of them. So we're communicating more, which is connecting us more. Um, and then I would say even myself as an owner, my my communication has improved. I'm a lot more um, direct, but in like still obviously kind, but I, I think I would pretend or, or dance around what I wanted my staff to do for the day. And I thought people could read my mind. <laughs> and um, I learned that through working with uh, service agencies that, you know, direct requests and communication is the best and it's not unkind. And now I I can share better what I need from all my staff. They know how to be successful and everyone's happy at the end, the end of the day. And then finally, um, community support has the community's really, really stood behind this company. And it's the reason why we've grown so organically to be international. And it's like a candle at the end of the day, but it's more than a candle, clearly. Yeah. Um, the people want to spend money at companies and off and purchase services from businesses that care all care about people and where they can see all people represented. Discover the latest trends, strategies, and success stories in the ever-evolving world of business. Canadaspodcast.com subscribe now. As a company, do you do anything special for for uh in terms of staff training uh, uh to um I guess to be co-workers with people with this disabilities? We when we first um became inclusive, uh, I have a friend who's an occupational therapist and she came in and supported myself and our our other managers with working alongside and and training our supported staff members and also giving a lot of our team um, information if we had any questions um, just to understand everyone's needs and accommodations a lot better. Uh, we also, we had a about a year, for a year and a half, we had this one employee who was deaf and we brought an interpreter in for 10 weeks and taught our team sign language once a week so we could better communicate and even if um none of us were fluent in sign language because we would we could text or write write things down to communicate it was really meaningful that you know we could even pick up a few words and uh do our best to communicate and that just showed that we cared a lot um so yeah those have been really really nice and exciting those those little trainings that we've done and you know just reaching out to these agencies to see how we can be more be more supported whenever something comes up yeah, yeah, exactly. So you look back <laughs> at things. Uh, you you must be kind of like shocked at uh, where you've come from 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 where you've been. Oh yeah, it's like sometimes I think I'm like, how did this? How did this happen? Like it's like how I said earlier. I'm like, it's it's just a candle. Like I think honestly, I don't even know if I believed in it as much as other people did when we started and. I almost feel a little bad about that. Like I didn't give what we were creating and how important it was enough credit. Um, but I am like Milkjar made it honestly three, four years ago. Like we, when one of my staff members said to me that she wanted to retire at Milk Jar, like that was just one of those moments that I was like, oh gosh, it's okay. Well, Milk Jar does need to keep going because this employee needs to retire here. So we got to keep it going. But I was like, I, this is, it's been more than I could have ever imagined. And I'm so happy and grateful and we're, we're continuing to grow. And I see how every time, you know, like we, our mission at Milk Jar is to create inviting spaces. And we're always trying to think of, you know, reflect on, are we doing that? And what can we do more when the time is right? Um, and, you know, the first, it was the donations that we support, that we would, um, we would donate to organizations. And four years after that, it was, you know, hiring people with disabilities as well um, in our company. And then now it's kind of turning into, you know, what more can we do and where, where can we, you know, have the most impact. And I think it's getting this message out to other businesses that you get to do this and it makes your company so much better. It makes your team amazing. And, you know, it really gets you out of bed on those tough days in business. Like if we didn't have this purpose, I'm sure. 
I'm sure, I don't know if I could have kept Milk Jug going if it was just selling a candle. It just would seem not as not as impactful or purposeful. No. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Okay, I've got to ask um, uh, your last name. Uh, you're not. Are you related to these? To the uh, clothing, to the sewing machine. <laughs> oh, the uh, no, the sewing machine. Oh. No, for the the uh, menswear, uh, Henry Singer. No, I mean maybe I don't know. Yeah. Not that I know of. I, okay. <laughs> I was just curious. You never know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so yeah look, it, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. You go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to ask. Uh, so when you look back at, uh, say, the beginning stages uh, of setting up a business, what was what was, I guess, your biggest challenge uh, uh, becoming an entrepreneur? Ah, me getting in my own way, I would say. Um, and I think that's, I would say that's probably maybe anyone's biggest challenge. I mean, I can't speak for everyone, but um, it's really when you just don't think you're cut out to do it. Because like, I mean, I I don't have any business experience. I've never, I didn't go to business school. I no entrepreneurship. but. Um, I think really quieting the noise around you of what it takes to start a business and doing what, oh, this is, there's like a cookie cutter way of owning business and networking and doing all these things. Um, like I remember kind of spending a lot of time, like trying to do all those things that didn't feel right. And I don't know, I'd get business cards and thinking I had to network and stuff. And I feel like I knew what to do already. And if I needed to find a contact, I would, but you know, I was kind of spending all this time doing what other companies were telling me to do and not really what felt right in my heart at the beginning. And I think it slowed me down. But then immediately when I started just kind of, you know, I'm going to quiet the outside noise and I'm going to trust that I do know and what to do. And I do know like what this company stands for and, you know, how to keep it going. Um, everything started falling into place a lot more. And, uh, yeah, like it's you got to focus on progress, not perfection. Uh, perfection will is kind of the killer of creativity. And, you know, as long as you're taking those baby steps forward and willing to make a mistake, because the mistakes are the greatest teachers, um, and you will you will eventually get to that kind of perfection or that ideal place that you really want to be. Mm -hmm. um, but don't let anything kind of hinder you from at least taking those baby steps forward and you know, seeing those obstacles as opportunities. And, and um, as you were, um, you know, moving along on your entrepreneurial journey, uh, were there any, I don't know, successful business people out there or, or books that you uh, kind of uh, looked at uh, to get ad advice or hints uh, uh, of what to do? No, <laughs> I don't know if you get if that's like a common answer. Yeah. Um, I would say like looking at my journey, um, it's a huge, what I believe in is trusting yourself. Mm. Um, I probably looked up blogs for little things like maybe, but it was probably tiny things about how to bookkeep or something. But then I got a bookkeeper because <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I knew I couldn't do that on my own. Um, I, I, I've really kind of shied away from um, learning too much from other people, which I don't know if that's always the best thing. Maybe it's made me falter a little more, but I think I learned best from my own experience. Mm -hmm. and, and I think when I'm, you're constantly looking about how others do things to copy it or do it that way, it's not really trusting yourself. And then there's probably a lot of fear and anxiety around um, doing something the right way. And I don't think there is a really right or wrong way. There's just a way and, you know, you're going to be able to do it if it feels right in your heart. So yeah, no, it's, I, I've never, I got it. I, even like I said earlier, I had a business card for like, a, I think a year and then I, I don't have them now. And I even go to sometimes some group events and people ask for a business card and I'm like, Oh, I don't have one. <laughs> and I say, what do I say? I say, uh, if you need to find me, you'll find me. <laughs> like yeah. I say something kind of airy fairy like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's just really trusting and surrendering and knowing, like, you know, I know, I know what I want this coming to be. I know what the smell is supposed to smell like. And, you know, I know that this employees, um, you know, with this accommodation they're needing, I can figure it out. Um, and it's really exciting and constantly creative. <laughs> Stay ahead of the game with our expert tips and strategies that will help your business thrive in a digital era. 
canadaspodcast.com. Subscribe now. Doing a business uh, venture in Calgary. How has that been? Like, uh, you know, uh, do you do you think Calgary is a, I, I don't know, quote unquote, business friendly environment for uh, people who want to start up things? Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm originally from Victoria, BC, and I moved to Calgary when I was 20, 21. Um, and I've been here now, yeah, like 16, 15, 16 years. And I would say it's definitely a great place to start a business. Um, and I, from growing up actually in BC, I don't know if Milk Jar would have been taken off or received as well over from my hometown. And not that it wouldn't have been, you know, accepted or anything. I just think here there's so many people that move, I find, to Calgary from other places. Yeah. So people, um, there's almost this energy of just, you know, getting out there and meeting one another. And people are super friendly here. And, you know, I mean, we've been a bit more of a, a business oil and gas kind of town back in the back a number of years ago. So I think there is that energy of like coming to Calgary and being able to, you know, set some roots and set some um, kind of things down, whether that is even a home or if it is a business. And there's quite a few people in Calgary and people don't mind driving to a market. And I mean, we, people drive everywhere (laughs) around here. So people get out of the house a lot. People go out of the house to go to the Rocky Mountains. They get out of the house to go to a market. Um, they they explore quite a bit here. So mm. yeah, but Calgary is an excellent, excellent place. I found the community support and even the small business world, um, the support between other businesses is very supportive. It's not a competition here, I find at all. Yeah. Well, it comes obviously being an entrepreneur, quite busy all the time. Uh, do you have an opportunity to nurture that work-life balance? Yeah, I do. I, I I struggle with this quite a bit. Um, the last seven and a half years, <laughs> <I'm not laughs> sure. but I'm I'm actually kind of figuring that out right now. I I've, I've found some really amazing people at Milcher that I've been you know having take on a few more responsibilities. Um, I've learned to delegate, which has always been a little challenging. I think when you start a company, um, it's your baby and. Yeah. Um, you always want to help out. And uh, I think it's, but it's also been kind of my journey of learning to let go and knowing that, you know, you got to let people spread their wings and that's how they kind of find their purpose in your company. And that's kind of what you're looking for. Yeah. So work-life balance has been very, very challenging, especially when you're trying to get to a place where almost the everything is kind of working smoothly finally like you have the the funds coming in to buy the materials and you have the team that knows what what to do to do work in the day to day and get all the things done so it 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 takes time but um yeah finally in this last little bit it, i've i finally found it so i'm working a little bit less in the day to day so what do you do when you're not in the office then uh, I've been walking my dog quite a bit. I've been going to, I've finally been going to yoga again. And I'm actually, this is pretty cool. I, I bought a saxophone earlier this year. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been taking saxophone lessons <laughs> and I, I, I played the piano. And, um, when I was younger, I didn't really like the piano though. So I don't, I don't, I can't remember anything, but I really love music and, um, I really love learning. I think you have to keep learning. I think when I when I was feeling overwhelmed at Milk Journey a couple of years ago and like I was working almost too much, um, I realized why I didn't have, I kind of lost a little bit of a spark for a while. And it was because I love getting creative and learning. And the last time I had learned something was how to make a candle. I turned it into a business and then I never learned anything after that. Because I was, well, I guess I learned business and I learned a lot of other things, but I would say personally, something just for me creatively. Um, so this year I kind of realized and reflected and I was like, okay, I need to get back to doing that. And I think I've been a lot better of a of a um, kind of person at Milk Jar when I go in there. I'm just a lot happier and taking care of myself. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Just resting. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. Well, thanks so much, Holly, for joining us today. 
Thanks, Mario. Yeah, it's uh, it's been wonderful to chat with you. Um, it's been a big Christmas season, so coming up. So yeah, we're excited to to kind of keep going. All right, wonderful. Okay, that was Holly Singer, who is founder of Milk Jar Candle Company in Calgary. I'm Mario Tonaguzzi, managing editor of Canada's Podcast. Thanks for joining us today.